Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Anson and welcome back to a brand new video. Today is going to be the day where we start with Nest.js tutorial series. I am very excited to start the series because I have been using Express as well as Nest.js for uh, quite some time. And uh, I actually use Nest.js for most of my projects, if not all now. And you've actually seen me use Nest.js for some of my videos. And I do have some tutorial series that are pretty long with Nest. But this is going to be a more, uh, a more uh, progressive, um, smaller, like smaller length video series where we're going to pretty much go through uh, a lot of the framework. And I'm going to show you guys how you can build web applications using Nest.js. And you're going to... Uh, see why Nest.js itself is very powerful and why you'd want to never use Express or any other framework once you switch over to Nest. So in a nutshell, Nest is really just a framework that is actually built on top of Express. If you go through the documentation and if you've uh, used a little bit of Nest.js, you'll actually notice that a lot of the things are very similar to how you would set up an Express app. You can think of it like just a large framework, tons of libraries that wrap around uh, Express functions, and it does a, and adds a lot more functionality and gives you more customization. And it's also uh, it's also first class support for TypeScript, which means that by default you can actually use Nest with TypeScript. Though uh, I'm not sure if you can actually use Nest.js with JavaScript. I've only ever used it with uh, TypeScript. Okay. Well, actually, you know, since it's TypeScript in general, you can write JavaScript in TypeScript. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. But um, anyways, so Nest.js itself has many features that a lot of people might not even heard of before, especially if you've never really understood frameworks such as Spring Boot or Spring or frameworks that really go in on dependency injection as well as inversion of control. So that's the those are the two main takeaways that you have to understand. Uh, when it comes to developing Nest.js applications. It's actually not too difficult to understand it, so I'll explain a little bit more down the road when we progress through this tutorial. Okay, but I'm not going to bore you guys too much with a lot of the, you know, the theory, at least not for now. And most of those things are already written on the documentation already. So what we're going to do is we're just going to immediately get started with setting up a simple Nest.js application. You're going to see how easy it is to set it up and it's going to be very easy to create our own routes okay so what we're going to do is you want to make sure first that you have the nest.js cli installed so go ahead and make sure you install that uh, make sure you go into your console and type npm i short for install hyphen g and what this will do is it'll install globally and you want to type in at nest.js slash CLI. Okay, so that will install the dependency globally for you. So you can use the nest.js CLI to pretty much scaffold a project very quickly. If you don't want to use a CLI, you can just clone a simple starter project from the official nest.js repository. But personally for me, I enjoy using the CLI tool. Okay, so it's actually really easy to set up a nest.js project. If you've actually used Angular before, nest is actually inspired by Angular. So the CLI is actually very closely similar to the Angular CLI. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're simply just going to type nest new. And I'm going to go and just call this nest.js tutorial. And you're going to see that it's going to give us a prompt. It's going to say we're scaffolding your uh, application. And you can see that we have a bunch of files that have been generated. It's going to ask you which package manager would you like to use. Uh, I'm going to stick with a yarn. I personally like using yarn because it's a lot faster. So we're going to hit enter and we're just going to wait for the application to pre uh, pretty much finish scaffolding. It shouldn't take too long. I would say at most take probably like uh, 30 seconds to maybe a minute. Depends on your computer though. Uh, looks like it's already done. That was pretty fast. And um, cool. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's see the into Nest.js tutorial. And let's just take a look at the project itself. And let's look at all the files and go over everything. So that way we are familiar with the project itself. So you guys will see how uh, how less scary it is. Okay. So this is what a Nest.js project would look like once you have finished scaffolding. So you have lots of files like any ordinary project, but we're, we'll go through it one by one. 
So, uh, so some of the simple files that you may have seen before are the ESLint files. So these are pretty self-explanatory. I'm not really going to explain it. You have your gitignore files. You have your prettier RC. Prettier is another uh, formatter. Uh, so you can uh, use the local uh, pretty RC uh, configuration if you want. There's a nest.js or a nestcli.json file. So this is pretty much configuration for the CLI tool. So since you're working locally with, uh, with uh, this project, you can actually configure stuff in here uh, to work with the nest.js CLI. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's more documentation on that. Uh, let's see, it should be right over here. And you can see that there should be some mention about the configuration for the CLI. I personally have never really used that config file much, but I'm sure that if you wanted to figure some stuff out, it should probably be uh, somewhere over here. I think there's got to be something somewhere over here. It'll be somewhere over here. So you guys can uh, you guys can just uh, look into that. Okay. But anyways, so uh, the actual JSON file that's pretty straightforward. There is there is uh, a, there are a lot of scripts. So you have pre-build script, you have build, format, start, start dev. A lot of these are very straightforward. The ones that I personally use the most are start dev, uh, test, test E2E, and test watch, uh, as well as build. So whenever I need to build my Nest.js application from TypeScript, uh, compiled down into JavaScript, I will run the nest build command. And, uh, or at least that's what my uh, GitHub Actions pipeline will do. And then it will uh, be ready to serve the application using the built, uh, like the compiled uh, compiled JavaScript. Okay. Um, but there's also some configuration for Jest too. If you don't like it inside the package notation, you can actually put it inside its own Jest uh, config file. But it's pretty much set up already in a way that you can actually run E2E tests as well as unit tests immediately. So, um, we'll, and we'll actually dive into unit testing with Nest.js later. Uh, we have a README. So, like every project staff folder has README. You have a tsconfig.build.json. Okay. And you also have a tsconfig.json file. These are things that are pretty straightforward if you are already familiar with TypeScript, but that pretty much configures stuff for the compiler, uh, specifically on how to properly build certain things. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, play around with some of the scripts that are listed in the package.json file. So if I go over to my terminal and if I just type yarn build, this will pretty much run uh, this build script over here. So it'll actually run nest build, which you can see over here, it ran rim raft dist, and then it uh, it ran nest build. And you can see that this dist folder is going to have all of the compiled or transpiled JavaScript code. And this is the code that you're actually going to execute on your server whenever your application is ready to be deployed. I should have said production server. So in dev mode, you want to run everything in, uh, in like with the TypeScript uh, file. You like you want to execute all of these TypeScript code um, because it's a lot faster for you to develop. You can also just run the JavaScript as well, but there's a dev script that makes it a lot easier so that whenever you make changes to your code, it'll actually watch everything and it'll restart the server. So that speeds up development. There's a start prod script. So that's for uh, production. You can see that it executes node dist slash main, which it pretty much just executes this file over here. You can see that this main.js file is the compiled version of main.ts. Okay, um, so that's pretty much it with all these other files. So uh, like I said, these are pretty straightforward. We're not gonna really talk about those. So let's go into the source folder and let's talk about what are these files that we see in the source folder, okay? So pretty much the very first one is app controller spec.ts. So this is just a simple uh, spec file or a test file. So typically this is where you would write all of your test cases. So for example, you can see that uh, if you're familiar with testing uh, and if you've actually tested in Angular before, uh, it's very similar. Okay, you can see over here, uh, we have a controller instance and what it's doing is it's calling the controller dot the controller's uh, get method or not get it's going to call get hello and then it'll it'll pretty much uh, assert that response or the return value of that function to be hello world but we'll ignore testing for now we're going to worry about that later on uh in this tutorial series i'll teach you guys how to do that as well okay 
So we have the app.control.ts file. So we're going to spend a lot of our times working with controllers. So this is a simple example of what a controller uh, class looks like. Okay, you can see that it has uh, it has a decorator called controller. So this annotates this class as a controller. Okay, and you can see that this uh, controller has a constructor. And this constructor has an instance of the app service class, which we will get into in just a moment. Uh, right over here, we have a function called get hello. So that was similar to the, that's actually the function that you saw over here that was being called in the spec file. And this get hello function uh, returns a string, as you can see from the type annotation. And so we know that uh, this app service dot get hello uh, method call is actually going to return a string. Okay. Now, uh, every single get request that you're going to be implementing, it's going to be done inside a controller. Likewise, with your post, put, and patch requests, or even delete requests, those are going to be done inside a controller class. And it's going to be done by creating a function, or I should say method, because we're dealing with classes. Uh, it's going to be done by creating a method to handle that request. You use the appropriate decorator. So let's say if we're dealing with get requests, so we're trying to implement a get request, we're going to use the get decorator. And what's going to happen is going to say, hey, look, whenever we call the specific route for this route over here. So by default, uh, since we don't have any prefixes for our API, uh, this is just simply the, uh, the base route, the slash route with no other additional uh, prefix or suffix. So it's just going to give us, uh, it's, it's going to invoke this function. Okay. If you're using a post request, you will use the post decorator, which we will cover later. So you can see that over here, uh, let's take a look at the app service. So you can see that this app service, and if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can actually just right click this and you can click on go to definition. But, or you can just click on this app.service.ts class or this file. So you can see that over here, we have what's called an injectable. Now this injectable decorator pretty much annotates a class that can actually be injected, okay? It pretty much marks it as a provider. And what providers are, they can pretty much uh, be injected into literally any part of your application. Remember what I mentioned earlier, the key takeaway with Nest.js is that it uses dependency injection, okay? And it has its own inversion of control, its own IOC container that keeps track of all of the, uh, all of the uh, providers, okay? And so essentially what's gonna happen is when you mark a service as an injectable, you can pretty much inject it anywhere in your application. Okay. And what that means is instead of creating instances over and over and over again in all over your application, you can actually just inject the single instance that was created by the IOC container, because essentially there's a container that keeps track of all of the dependencies okay, during runtime, and you can inject it whenever you want. Okay, so like I said, it'll take a little bit of time to get used to uh, this whole thing, but I'll explain it as we go. But this is just a class that is marked as an injectable, and it has a method called get hello, and it returns a string. Okay, and when we call this method, uh, we call it this app this app service get hello. That's going to be returned as a response to uh, to to the route that we visit. Okay. Now there's the app.module.ts, okay? So like I said, it's very similar to Angular. So these modules are pretty much their own. You can think of it like the main root of your entire, of your entire, uh, like of your entire application. So the app.module.ts is the main module. This is where it has all of the controllers as all of the imports and all of the providers and any exports. But typically you will rarely probably ever have to export stuff in the app module. So typically modules are very useful to make your code a lot more modular and you can separate concerns into its own domain. So instead of having everything under one controller or one module, you can actually uh, categorize everything to keep your code a lot more organized. Okay. So like I said, we're not going to play around with the app.module.ts uh, file much because this is the root module. But if we ever need to set up configurations or if we need to import other modules, we would import them inside app module. And last but not least, the main.ts file. Uh, this is the main file, obviously. This is where we have a bootstrap function, 
okay and it just gets called and all this does is it pretty much just calls this static method create and it pretty much just bootstraps an application for us based on the app module okay so this will pretty much take care of all of the dependencies for us it'll initialize the entire nest application and all we do is we just call app.listen to the port really similar to express okay and our application is up and running so that's pretty much just a high level overview of how the base uh, project looks like and we've gone over a lot of things such as the controller and the service as well as the test file okay like i said it might be a lot of terminology right now but like i said in the next video we're going to go through everything one by one and i'm going to make sure that you guys understand how to actually set up a nest.js application with nest.js principles so I'm going to end this video right over here. So this will be our part one. In the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to create your own module as well as your own controller and your own service and how we can test that. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.